Hi. I'm Reverend Laura McLeod from Brookfield Congregational in Brookfield, Wisconsin. I'm here to share with you and honored to share with you some of the things that we did during COVID to try to keep the church connected and vital, particularly when we had to be virtual. We had so many things, but one of the things I'm most grateful for is that our church was already set up for virtual worship uh, and we were able to both live stream and edit and uh, post on our YouTube channel um, our worship services each week. That was an important part of our vitality and we're really grateful that we had that to start with. It's also been a learning curve. We've learned a lot of new things and new ways to be connected as I'm sure you all have. But we also uh, engaged in so many different things during the season and the time that we were away that um, you really kind of had to avoid us <laughs> if you didn't want to be involved or connected. So don't take my word for it. I've asked some other people to share their ideas too. Hi, I'm Margaret Sutton. I'm on the mission team at Brookfield Congregational United Church of Christ in Brookfield, Wisconsin. When the pandemic, pandemic hit last year, we could have just said, oh, we can't do anything. Our church is closed, take a break, you know, not knowing how long we'd be sitting it out. But we jumped in and we said that the organizations that we sponsor needed us more than ever. We started out by promoting a minute for mission uh, in the e-news e each week. We gave opportunities for people to donate and to contribute. We gave instructions on how to make masks. And um, we continued that for a few weeks as we got started. We had plans to do our annual rummage sale last year, but that got put on hold and then canceled. And we decided that we'd do a series of unrummage sales in our parking lot. We collected furniture, tools for the Habitat Restore, crafts for Meta House, and a number of other items, household items, Street Life received uh, socks and clothing, winter clothing, coats, Dispensa de Paz also, and the Women's Center. We had numerous opportunities for people to drive into our parking lot and drop off, and the big thing was that they got to see each other and socialize in a time when there was no socialization going on. So it was beneficial for all. As winter set in, we arranged to have our pastor lead us in some racial justice seminars, a series of weekly sessions on Zoom, which brought together a good number of people from in our church as well as outside of our church. We set out bins outside of our church doors for people to drop off collections. We collected feminine hygiene supplies for the Ruby's organization. During the winter months, there was a bin full of jigsaw puzzles for people to come and exchange jigsaw puzzles. The church school was very much involved in our mission activities. They made stepping stones that went to the Habitat for Humanity houses. They did written notes and cards that went to era, eras at Christmas time and uh, into the pockets of some of the coats that were collected and given away. They also did Thai fleece blankets that were given away to the guest house. And speaking of our um, our partners that we had always done meals with, since we were unable to go and serve them meals, we had the church school families at one time and the whole church at another time make sandwiches for the guest house, 400 to 500 the first time, and then another 150 the second time. They were made in the people's homes and brought and dropped off and then delivered to the guest house. We did a similar thing for Cathedral Center, uh, packaging up bag lunches for them, and also in the winter time, having a chili dump where we packaged the chili in soup containers and added some veggies and cookies and rolls to those to make a healthy and somewhat hot bag lunch for them. 
We did the same thing for the Hope Center where we were used to serving loaves and fishes twice a year. We did some bagged lunches for them. They also asked for snacks and uh, bottles of water, which we were able to contribute for their programs. And I'm happy to say that we have just completed our first time back at Hope House serving in more of a regular atmosphere with the people there just this last week. As the pandemic wore on and we came into a new year, we had some other agencies that came forward needing our help. In the spring, we collected 375 books for A Book Ahead. And we also continued our clothing collections moving into the seasons of summer with lightweight clothing. We supported the arts and literacy camp this summer and we collected snacks and beverages for their camp, as well as displaying a lot of their artwork that they had at the camp. And we found a need in an organization called Sleep in Heavenly Peace, which had bedding needs. So our last big collection this summer was 36 sheet sets, 44 pillows and 12 blankets to augment the uh, twin bunk beds that were being built for children who didn't have a bed to sleep in. We're also preparing in the future when they have another build day to have a coalition of workers to go and work at helping make these beds. In closing, I would like to say that what we found was the old adage that if you give, you receive more than you've given. And we found that to be very true, that by opening up our hearts and giving to other organizations, we received a lot more. And we also benefited our congregation by having them have opportunities to get together, to talk and catch up, and to actually be in the same space with people that they hadn't seen for a long, long time. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Marilyn Cummins. I'm a uh, parish nurse at Brookfield Congregational Church, and I also have a dual role as a assistant to Reverend Laura as a congregational life uh, advocate. And just when uh, COVID and the pandemic hit, uh, we certainly had to pivot with a lot of things. And one of them um, was our hospitality. We were no longer able to gather having coffee or beverages in our gathering room down the hall. And this is something that was very important to our church. We had a lot of uh, conversations at fellowship time, as I'm sure a lot of your churches did as well. But for the summer, we resurrected something we used to do, oh gosh, decades ago, called lemonade on the lawn. Uh, essentially, we moved our uh, fellowship activities outside. We put some card tables up and a serving table and we had lemonade and people brought in treats and we shared them outside. Um, so also being a parish nurse, it was especially in tune to what the first responders are doing, uh, particularly the nurses and aides and those that work in hospital situations. And one of the issues um, that came up with um, nurses having to wear masks all day long. We got the idea to do headbands, soft headbands, and then sew large buttons um, that would be um, sewn on just above the ears so the mask could then go over the buttons. And I, we've made 100 of those at least and um, gave those to the um, nurses in our church. We're working in clinical settings and Oh, they've gone all over the Milwaukee area and actually into the Chicago area, and this is an endless project. And, you know, we can't do much for those um, people that work so hard and, and keeping us all safe, but we can do something to relieve their ears from those masks. In conjunction with that, during the holidays last year, one of our, our two of our nurses in our congregation work in a um, medical respiratory ICU and um, we in conjunction with our mission team we purchased had cookies purchased at a, a good cost and we delivered cookies with headbands and you know those little things at the holidays that um, we all get but it was just to let the, the um, first responders know that we're thinking of them and we appreciate what they're doing and caring for those um, with COVID. 
during the Lenten season in our church, to kick it off, we traditionally had a, um, a dinner called Soup and, and, and Ashes. So, well, of course, that all changed last year again with COVID. So what we decided to do was um, we could make contact with people. Why couldn't we have soup and then do a drive-by? So um, Reverend Laura came up with the ingenious idea that we could um, serve soup through the car window. So that's exactly what we did. And one of us ran the bag out. Laura reached in and offered ashes to folks. So I believe at that point we had about 60 car loads of mm -hmm. people that came by. So for Thanksgiving last year, but we have um, folks at home that couldn't either drive or weren't in nursing facilities, but some elderly folks that were at home. And we decided to bring a Thanksgiving dinner to them, a very simple dinner and uh, we delivered those. We also extended that particular dinner ministry to um, a partnership that we have with UWM Christian Ministries. Well, we weren't able to do that in person as they weren't gathering and a lot of the students weren't even in um, school at the time, they were in virtual. But they did have a takeout program, so we delivered those and had a little conversation with the pastor there. And I think it Okay, I'm Barb Wood, and I just wanted to make a couple of comments about some things that the church offered last winter while we were quarantined. Um, it was such a blessing when a church member came to our door to deliver a couple of different things. Um, first of all, uh, someone came during Advent, and there was a manger and baby Jesus and a bag that was put on our doorstep. And then at Christmas time, there was a paper chain um, and links that were delivered, and it was just so comforting when we were so isolated to have somebody from our church that reached out and was willing to come to our door with, with those things. Um, then during Lent, a devotional uh, book was put together and we were, those were delivered and everybody could read all of the different devotions from our church members that we were missing so terribly. And then we were able to pass it on. Um, we delivered and visited doorsteps of other members of the congregation as we um, delivered those bags and the, the, the um, items and it ended up in receiving and making phone calls. So we called people that um, were kind enough to deliver things and we received phone calls from people that we delivered to and it was really um, kind of an affirmation of the fact that our congregation is our extended family. So what thoughtful ways to keep us connected in difficult times. Thank you, BCC.